Yeah, already. Uh, thank you all our uh, viewers today. We want to welcome you to our today's session. It's about breast cancer awareness, prevention and management. Being October, we push uh, awareness of breast cancer. And uh, the reason we do that, uh, we join the other, the whole world to make it known that uh, breast cancer can be, uh, can be, when diagnosed study, you can get treatment and uh, get well from the cancer. So this month uh, theme is RISE, which means to rally in supporting, serving, and screening everyone. So you need to encourage the women that uh, are within your area. Is it a sister? Is it a cousin? Is it an auntie? Is it a mom? Take them to do mammogram screening because early detection saves life. Some signs or symptoms may come early or not, so you need, may not be able to know that you already have the cancer, but through mammogram, you're able to detect that early and the, you get the cure that is needed on time. Our today's speaker is Dr. Marek from MPSHA, and he's going to take us through this uh, disease called breast cancer. Dr. Marek, welcome. Uh, and take Thank, us you. Thank you very, very much. And I'm very happy to be here with all of you. And thank you for joining. Um, yes, it's October. It's a Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and that's why we would like to talk about breast cancer, because it is very important and it happens around us. Before I start, I just need to ask you a question. Can you see my slide and can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you clearly, but you can't see your slides. <laughs> you cannot see the slide? Yes. So what's going on? Because I'm sharing with you already. Mm -hmm. Okay, one second. Let's see what's going on. Can you see the slide now? Mm, I can see some names like coming up. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, so we're good. I hope you've seen this already and I hope you heard me talking already. And it's a pity that I cannot talk to you once a week and once a year. Because, yes, yes, it's very important, and I did mention it, October, it's, it's the pink October, we always talk about the breast awareness, breast cancer awareness, because breast cancer happens. And today I would like to talk mostly about breast cancer, but briefly about what cancer is generally and what are the most two important, or let's say two biggest killers uh, of ladies here in Kenya, and what can we do about it? The, there will be a couple of messages to take home. And most important message is we can catch it early. And if we catch it early, we can cure it completely. So whatever I say today, it's not about scaring you. I don't want you to, I don't know, finish this, uh, this, this, this talk and then think, oh, he was just so uh, talking about so many things which scared most of us. No, I want you to know that we can cure it, okay? I'm a breast surgeon, I'm a breast surgeon consultant on coplastic breast surgeon working with Ampisha Hospital and um, thank you very much for having us um, here today. What is cancer? Usually when we talk about cancer, usually everybody thinks, oh, it's one disease, you know, cancer probably looks like that little crab or whatever. No, it's not. Cancer is just a general name for many um, different problems, many different diseases, and cancer may happen in different organs, in different parts of the body. Of course, the most uh, common cancers are breast cancer in ladies, um, prostate cancer in men. The way one in eight ladies will develop breast cancer is the same with men. The men will develop prostate cancer. Um, most of the cancers these days, we know that, pr because very often we, we, we talk, okay, but where, where, did that, where does it come from? Where does, what causes cancer? There are a few different um, answers, or let's say there is no simple answer. There are a few different reasons. And one of those reasons is of course that we live longer. Okay, so the, the, the abnormal tissue in our body has time to grow. The, the answer is that cancer was always there, but we didn't have enough information how to, how to deal with it, how to test it, how to diagnose it. The answer also is that it's, we are what we eat. So whatever surrounds us and whatever we eat and whatever chemicals and pollution probably doesn't make it easier, probably makes it 
more difficult, or let's say easier for can or let's say easier for us, but it makes it e uh, easier for cancer to, to grow. And we also know now, last few years has, have shown that many cancers are related to some kind of infection. And for example, the cervical cancer, and, and you know it, everybody talks about it, that cervical cancer and some other cancers are related, are caused by human papilloma virus. Just to tell you, even breast cancer possibly can be caused, or at least some breast cancers can be caused by human papilloma virus. And then of course, very often we say, how do we reduce the risk? Can we stop cancer? The answer is no, we cannot stop it. We cannot prevent it 100%. Because um, if it is to happen, it will happen. Yes, but we can reduce the risk. And by reducing the risk for many cancers, not only breast, is being active, being uh, making sure that we um, we, that, that our, we keep our weight under control, making sure that we, uh, we stay away from tobacco, making sure that we stay away from sun, because of course UV light can cause uh, especially um, skin cancers and so on. Now, this is the message which I want you to take home, please. And it was already mentioned earlier, early detection saves lives. With cancers, there are many different cancers and many different symptoms, and we'll, now we'll come in, we are coming to talk a bit more about breast cancer. Early detection saves life. And we have screening programs, which were mentioned. I did say already that there are two main killers of women here in Kenya, in East Africa, and it's breast cancer, and it's um, cervical cancer. For breast cancer, the screening is very simple. It's mammogram. We start mammograms from the age of 40. Um, and here Kenyan guidelines say from the age of 40, once a year up to the age of 54. And then once every two years um, after 55. Sometimes we start breast screening cancer, uh, let's say screening um, uh, with mammograms a bit earlier. If there is family history or there is any previous problems, we start mammograms even from the age of 35. In younger ladies, where the breast tissue is very dense, we usually do ultrasound scan first, and then sometimes mammogram. We'll talk about it a bit more a bit later. And cervical cancer, it's the pap smear. And in both of these examples, we can, by screening, we can find, we can diagnose abnormality many years before it becomes a problem. Sometimes it could be even four years before it becomes a lump or before it becomes a cancer. Breast cancer is one of the most common cancers in East Africa. This year, WHO says that breast cancer is the most common cancer in the world. Now, um, why is it important for us to talk about it? Usually, we see that breast cancer, or let's say when I was in Europe, usually we started seeing cancer patients at the age of 50, late 40s, 50s, and then the incident, or let's say the, the number of patients was growing with age. Here in Sub-Saharan Africa, here in Kenya, I see 30 to 40 percent of my patients, and I discussed it with my colleagues who, who work with breast cancer in other institutions, and they agree, 40, 30 to 40 percent of our breast cancer patients here in Kenya are young girls, are girls in their 30s or very early 40s. And um, so this is also very important because usually we think, oh, cancer means old people. No, not, not only. And very important message is, and I will keep repeating it, um, if cancer is detected early, it can be cured completely. The problem which we have here is that, unfortunately, up to 80%, 8 out of 10 patients, it's usually ladies, but it's also men, and I will talk about it later, come very late, when it's very difficult to deal with, the, with, with or let's say very difficult to, to cure the cancer. We can keep it under control very often for many years, but it's very difficult to cure, 80%. So, official statistics in Kenya say that one in 10 lady will develop breast cancer. Uh, statistics from Europe and from America say that one in eight ladies will develop breast cancer. I think we are exactly the same. So whether we live in Europe, in, in, in Kenya, Africa, or in America, we are the same. So um, I think we, we should be t talking about one in eight ladies will develop breast cancer here in Kenya as well. 
And this is the black statistics. 80% come too late. They come very late when it's very difficult to, 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 to cure it. My message, which I will keep repeating, early detection is critical. Early detection saves life. What is breast cancer? Okay, what is cancer generally? Cancer happens to every one of us every day. Every one of us today sitting here listening to, to this talk, every one of us has a few abnormal cells. Fortunately, our bodies have special system. It's, it's, it's a bit of immune system. It's a bit of, let's say, system which is able to recognize abnormal cells and tell them, stop, you are abnormal, you are mutated, you have to die. It's called apoptosis. It's, apoptosis is a bit, you can imagine, like a red light. When something goes wrong, the red lights go, red lights go on and the cell, the abnormal cell, should die, shouldn't keep growing. For some reasons, it doesn't happen and it just keeps growing, growing, and this is when the tumor forms and this is when it may start spreading to other tissues. Because we are talking about breast cancer, this is the easiest way, this is the way to talk about exactly what, we, what I mentioned, how does it grow. Most of breast cancers start in the duct, in the milk duct. That's why we call it ductal carcinoma. So you can see at the top, I, I hope you can see my, 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 my mouse, my arrow. At the top, we have a normal uh, milk duct. What happens, and it's very, very, very common, it, it happens that something starts growing very often, it's nothing to worry about, but sometimes inside the duct, the tissue, the cells, they keep growing, growing, growing until they become abnormal. And you see, when I said that we can catch cancer early, we can catch it between normal and be, before it becomes something we call ductal carcinoma in situ. So this is not cancer yet, but it's abnormal. And from this, this moment here, it may, with time, become invasive. What does it mean? At one point, this, the abnormal cells will start invading. You can see the green cells are invading the duct. And this is cancer, this is invasive carcinoma. If we give it more time, then it starts spreading more and it starts spreading to the uh, nearby tissue or even start, it can uh, spread across and metastasize to other, other, other organs. Now, I did mention breast cancer usually happens to ladies, but one in 100 cancers, so 1% 1 of 100, well, 1% of breast cancers happen to men. And I have met men here in Kenya already. I've been to Kenya for two years and I have met a few gentlemen with breast cancer, who had breast cancer, who, who were diagnosed recently with breast cancer. So gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to remember that it may happen to both of us. Usually when we talk about risks of breast cancer, what do we talk about? Yes, I did mention age because most of breast cancers usually happen to all the ladies. But very important is that being a woman, being a female, increases the risk of breast cancer, of course, because you ladies, you have the breasts. Family history. Yes, it's it's very important risk, but please remember, and this is the message to take home, very often when I talk to my friends or to my patients, they say, oh, there is there is no cancer in my family, it will not happen to me. It's not true. Only 10% of cancers, breast cancers, run in the family. 80% yeah. of breast cancers do not run in the family. They just happen and we don't know why. So please remember, if it doesn't happen in your family, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have to happen to you. Now, there are some breast problems, there are some breast diseases which are benign, but they increase the risk. At the same time, if someone had cancer in left breast, there is slightly higher risk of getting cancer in the right breast. So that's why it's important to remember about it and it's important to, to, to be aware and to do the investigation if anything happens. Um, very often we talk about breast density. Young ladies have breast, very dense breasts, some ladies have very breast dense breasts, and we know that breast density is related, high breast density is related to increased risk, risk of uh, developing breast cancer, being diagnosed with breast cancer. And remember, I did mention it earlier, being obese or being overweight 
increases the risk of breast cancer because very often breast cancer feeds off estrogen, which is female hormone, and fatty tissue stores the estrogen and releases the estrogen. So that's why it increases the risk. This is a complicated slide because talking about cancer is complicated. But I just want to tell you that it doesn't have to be. I put it here on purpose because if we don't know where to look, if we don't want, if we don't know what, what are we looking for, of course it seems, it sounds, it's it's complicated. But breast cancer symptoms are quite straightforward. And this is the moment I would like you to use your phones, if you are on your phones, Google knowyourlemons.com. Know your lemons, and once you Google it, you will be able to see exactly this picture, because this is the best way to talk about symptoms of breast cancer. Now, I'd like you to spend four seconds, and I want you to look for pain, okay? Because very, very often what happens, very often we just, we think, oh, pain means something serious. Has anybody found pain? 12 symptoms and, okay, I'll help you, there is no pain. Very often breast cancer, like all other cancers, come very silent. There are no fireworks, there, are no, there is no pain, there is just symptom which we can see on the tip of the nipple. Because when we look in the mirror, ladies, or when your partners look at you, they can see the nipples and they can see the skin. And very often, the most common cancer symptoms is the nipple, which is trying to tell us, look, please, there is something going on, please investigate, or the skin. So let's just spend a few minutes talking about the nipple. Sometimes the nipple can be pulled in. We, we call it inverted nipple. Sometimes there could be some crust on the tip of the nipple. Very often, the crust could be just an eczema or something, nothing to worry about, but sometimes it could be beginning of an early cancer, which we call or DCIS or Paget's disease, which starts at the nipple. Sometimes the nipple is trying to cry and tell us, look, there is something, just please go for a test because there is something going on. So sometimes the nipple discharge is completely clear, clear, just like water, just like tears, or bloody, red. Usually it means please investigate, there could be something going on. Nipple discharge is very common and, and many ladies, especially if you had a child, you know that the milky, yellowish discharge, sometimes even greenish discharge, if it's from both breasts and it's, especially if it's, um, if it happens after squeezing yeah, the nipple, so. it happens, but it's, it's, it's not, it's not, fortunately, it's not um, sinister, but it's always better to have it investigated. Talking about skin, sometimes the skin may be a bit thicker. Sometimes the skin can be pulled in. Sometimes there could be something just behind the skin, like a lump, or vein or anything. Sometimes the skin could be red and hot. It looks like an infection, but it could be an early stage of an in inflammatory carcinoma. The skin may look like um, orange skin. There could be a lump or bump you can feel, or you can feel sometimes smaller or bigger lump. And usually I think the lump is the one of the most common symptoms the patients come with. Please remember, you can't see pain. None of these symptoms is related to pain. It doesn't mean that breast cancer doesn't come with pain. It may, rarely, but it may. And very often what I see in the clinic is that someone comes with left breast pain and we see something sinister on the right side. So sometimes it's just the heavens. Someone is looking after, after us and telling us, oh, look, just go for a check because there is pain. Okay, I did mention pain. I did mention that pain is not one of the common symptoms. It's very rare, but pain also is invest it's important to, to, to investigate. And um, why, early, why, why, why mammogram, why screening is so important? Because if we catch cancer early, if we catch cancer at the very early stage, we can, with mammogram, we can catch even precancerous cells, something what is not cancer yet, and what may take even up to three or four years to become a lump or, or, or cancer. Very often, we can just remove that area of abnormality, and there is no need for mastectomy, there is no need for chemotherapy, no, there is no need for all those um, 
expensive and and not um, let's say the treatments which are not kind treatments. So here, almost all women who are diagnosed early can be cured, okay, and have no cancer symptoms for five years. Now, those who come late, and unfortunately, this is very often what we see in Kenya, only three in 20 can be cured, okay? So that's why screening is so important. That's why um, early detection is so important. At MP Shah Hospital, we have one-stop clinic. What does it mean? One-stop clinic usually means if there is anything new, anything different, you are worried about something you found, you can come, uh, you can contact, the, you can book the clinic on the um, email or you can contact us on, on the phone. I can give you the contact details later. One-stop clinic means that the patient will be seen by a breast specialist. If needed, and depending on the age, all the uh, imaging or the scans will be done the same day. And you'll go home the same day, usually about two or three hours later, knowing what's going on. So there is no need to keep going, coming for one scan, another scan, then results, blah, blah, blah. Everything happens in one clinic in one day. Okay, this is exactly, I explained what it means, mammogram. Mammogram is the screening tool. Please remember and don't listen to anybody who tells you that mammogram is bad. No, it's not. Mammograms used to be bad in 1960s. And another question, another quick quiz. How many of us were born before 1960s? I don't think many, many of us, because usually they wouldn't be able to use Teams or Zoom, those people born before 1960s. And if you are on Zoom, then definitely you were born later. Now, I'm sorry, I'm trying, um, I, okay, I shouldn't have said it. Okay, mammogram. Indeed, in, before 1960s, or let's say in 1960s, they started developing mammograms. And in those days, we, we medics, we didn't understand how mammograms should work, how it should be built. And it's true, in 1960s, they were built out of steel, they were heavy, and they were a bit more uncomfortable. The modern mammograms we have now are um, digital, so they don't have to squash the breast a lot. The, they, they have nice and soft um, plastic tissue, which, of course, we have to squash the breast a bit, but mammogram is not painful. Mammogram shouldn't hurt. Now, it's very important, and I need to tell you why mammograms don't hurt, is you ladies, you have to remember when is the best time to go for a screening mammogram. And you know that once a month, just before your periods, the breasts are tender, the breasts are uncomfortable. You don't want anybody to touch them. And please remember, don't go for a mammogram just before your period because you will not like it because the breasts are already a bit swollen and already a bit unhappy. And of course, even if there is a bit of squeeze done by the mammogram, it will be uncomfortable. So the best time to go for your screening is after you start your period. So basically what it means, if, you're, if you start bleeding today, give it four, four days, five days, and then you can go for, for the scan. And you know that this is the time when your breasts are much softer, much more comfortable, and they will not mind being squashed a bit. I did mention that mammogram is the most important tool. I did mention that mammogram can, and especially regular mammogram. The screening mammogram is done regularly. It could be done once a year. Yes, and, and I did say that here in Kenya, our guidelines say once a year. Um, I would say, yes, it's important. And especially if there is family history, once a year mammogram is very important. But even if it's done once every two years, it's better than nothing. Very often we say, oh, but uh, mammograms, I was told that they can't see uh, uh, everything. I, uh, ultrasound scan is better. No, it's not true. Um, mammogram looks for different things. Mammogram is there, it's an x-ray and is looking especially for density or mammogram is looking for microcalcifications. And very often breast cancer start, the breast cancers, they start with microcalcifications, tiny little white spots, which we can see only on mammogram. Sometimes, and especially in young ladies, the mammogram will be very dense. And we did talk about it, that young ladies will have dense tissue. Basically, there is lots of white tissue on the mammogram. This is the breast tissue, and it is normal. We do expect it in young ladies. And that's why 
we very often we need both. We need mammogram, and mammogram is there looking for the calcification, so for density. And we also need an ultrasound scan because, for example, when you look at this particular picture, we always compare left and right. We always compare to make sure that we know what's going on. But there is an area which is there is a, an area on the left breast which we cannot see on the right. And then the ultrasound scan tells us: is this a fluid collection, a cyst? Is this a density which is just a simple, let's say, a breast nodule, or is this like this particular one here? This is very typical, abnormal on ultrasound scan lesion, which is cancer. This is what cancer may look like on ultrasound scan. Message to take home. Breast cancer can be cured. It's my talk today is not about scaring you. My talk today is about, I think it's a, it's, it's, it's the good news. It's the message is that we can cure it, but we, it's, it, it makes it easier if we catch it early. So early detection saves lives. Um, this year, Mpisha Hospital has an offer. We have it every year for the last few years, and it's a special offer, um, screening offer for ladies. Um, it's mammogram, ultrasound scan, plus consultation, all together for 5,000 if you are 40 years plus, or if you have some family history or uh, or, or let's say there was a history of cancer earlier. It's ultrasound scan, pap smear for 3,000 for younger ladies, and so on and so on. And this is the contact details. Um, now, if you'd like to come to MPSHA for the screening, it's very simple. The mammogram is done at the main MPSHA hospital in Parklands. There is no need to book. You just, it's on a walk-in basis. You can walk in and just have the mammogram done. And if you'd like to, for example, come and, um, uh, and, and talk to me or be seen in the clinic, Need to discuss the results, then this is the time to book book an appointment, which can be done on email, breastclinic at mpshahosp.org, or phone number WhatsApp 0784-118-008. Any questions? I'm all yours. Hello. Yes, any questions? Yes, hello. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've raised my hand. My name is Victoria. Um, hello, Victoria. At the beginning of, of, of Dr. Marek's session, he said that you cannot prevent cancer. But, um, well, before COVID started, um, the, the news was all about uh, the HPV vaccine that should be given to teens or preteens, girls. And so I'm wondering if it's not for a preventative measure, what's the purpose of that HPV vaccine? Because it's supposed to, you know, um, safeguard them from cervical cancer. So um, I'm a bit lost now. Okay, thank you very much, Victoria. Yes, very good. So basically, I did mention that some cancers, and maybe more and more, we'll, we'll know about it with, with time once we have more research and more data, but it looks like some cancers are um, uh, related to infections. And yes, indeed, in those cases, we know that, for example, eradicating some infections like the HPV virus will reduce um, the risk of, for example, cervical cancer, and hopefully not only cervical cancer, but many other cancers, okay? We hope that it will reduce it to minimum. Will it prevent to zero? We don't know. But basically what I'm trying to say is, Yes, it's very, very well spotted. And thank you so much for this question. Hopefully, we will we'll learn more and more and we'll be able to prevent some cancers. OK, but what, what I was trying to say is um, we cannot prevent it 100 percent. We know that, for example, if there is family history, if there is if there is, for example, breast breast cancer family history and breast cancer gene mutation. Right now, we know that there are three known gene mutations which lead to breast cancer. And with these mutations, the risk of developing this breast cancer, being diagnosed with breast cancer is up to 90%, nine zero. So the question is not, will it happen? The question is when? And we cannot prevent these cancers now. Um, 
we cannot and now again is this is what i mentioned earlier that um, only 10 percent of breast cancers run in the family there is that 90 percent which happens and we don't know why it happens it could be due to some infections for example HIV, uh, hpv but we don't know okay so yes hopefully we should be able to prevent some many maybe all of them i don't know uh, cervical cancers but not right now and what happened is you see you mentioned it yourself that the hpv um, in, um, uh, immunization is done for girls up to the age of 10 before they start their sexual life and i think if you were there last year we did talk about it already so yes hopefully it will reduce and we know we have studies from from other countries that it does reduce the um, uh, cervical cancer but it doesn't prevent it 100 percent I hope I answered your question. Yes, you have, you have. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just go ahead and ask a question? Please, Dr. Dali. Okay, my, name, my name is Pamela. Uh, you've just mentioned that there's some gene, um, uh, gene profile or whatever genes they are that will predispose you probably to breast cancer. Is there a way of uh, the 